21 days knowing that no matter what, I am finishing them. Mm. And this black panic hole happening between the second and the third week. Now, to another person, it might happen after a month and a half. To another person, it might happen in the first week. It doesn't matter, but we hit it sometime, the majority of us, <laughs> in the pranic journey. And it happened to me between the, second and the se between the second and the third week. And this is why I was lucky, because when it happened, I knew that I promised myself, I promised creation, I promised prana, life energy, that no matter what, I'm finishing these 21 days. And only after them, I'm checking, do I want to continue? Do I want to stop my journey? If I wouldn't have this promise with myself, probably I would stop in between the second and third week. <laughs> and because I had this promise to myself and I went through all of this mess and internal challenge and pain that I went through in this, in this time, I said, okay, I just go through it. I allow it to be. And, and I get to the 21st day, 21 day. When I got ready to the 21 day, the big drama was behind me. Mm -hmm. And that made me see my journey in a different way and finally uh, understand that, you know what? It is very challenging, but I'm just giving trust. And I don't care that I'm 15 kilos less because I lost 15 kilos. And that's from here. Like, I don't have a lot where to go, you know? <laughs> I, I was already like 72 kilos when I started and I came back to my original uh, weight. Uh, so I didn't have any extras because sometimes people have extras. So I lost 15 kilos out of it. Uh, I was pretty, pretty challenged, more weak. Some people like really shook me physically and, and thought I lost my mind. Uh, and all of this just uh, made me go into the pranic black hole. But when I got out of it, I was like, okay, I'm feeling either, even if I'm weak, even if I'm more uh, skinny, even if people think I've lost my mind, mm -hmm. I don't care. I feel great from inside. I feel so connected with creation like I never felt in my life. I feel so passionate to go through this journey and to give it a try. Just give it a try. And if it doesn't work, I love life. I wouldn't endanger myself or them. So I'll just drop that journey. But all of that was on this promise that I made on the 21st day. And this is what I recommend to many people that do this journey, to have a small promise with ourselves of, of like, let's say you've done uh, 11 days, eight days, 10 days, whatever, promise the same amount at least. So you know, and you can take it in small pieces, in small pieces like this. Uh, and if I wouldn't make this promise, Christiana, we probably wouldn't be sitting here today. <laughs> probably. <laughs> so this is for the first 21 days. From there and on, what I've happened is like, I finished them and then I said, okay, I take another 21 days. I finished them and then I said, I take another month, another month. Like this, I came to my half year. In exactly. this half year, what do you say? Gradually. Yeah, baby yeah, steps, like you said. And in this half a year, I, I really only stayed in liquids. Besides me fooling myself a little bit, and this is things I as well uh, share to, to people, like I put a chocolate in my mouth and I said like, oh, I'll suck it. So it would be like a uh, liquid. <laughs> eh, wrong. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> in the beginning, I sucked it. So I like fooled myself for it to be liquid. But after, uh, I don't know, a couple of times I've done it, I've done it like doing another thing. I've put the chocolate in my mouth. I've done it while doing another thing. And suddenly I'm like, uh huh. You, you, oh, you who's, done it? To who's done it? What was that? <laughs> you know? Just the automated systems have started to jump again. Uh -huh. Understood very quickly. Like that's, that's a no, no, you know, so put it aside. Uh, so I had this in this half a year, but besides that half a year, this was a half a year of only liquids. And, and from there and on, uh, I've, Usually people, you don't need to do this at home, <laughs> but it happened that I've done two and a half years eventually of only liquids. Mm -hmm. Now the pranic journey for me and where we go with it is at least where I guide to is to be a Breatharian level three. Breatharian level three means opening the hybrid engine. We still <laughs> have the food engine. We don't throw it to garbage. We don't think it's the devil. We don't think it's wrong. It's wonderful. You know, we still have the food engine, but we're opening as well the pranic engine the life energy engine. Mm -hmm. so they could dance in between each other. This so is- They can function both. It's not that you put a piece of food in your mouth and you start to shut down the pranic engine, uh, engine or you're no longer connected to the pranic field of exactly. chocolate. That, that doesn't happen, yeah? 
And after many, exactly, and after many years with self-experiment, self-experimenting and experience, and as well guiding hundreds of people already around the world and in Israel, so I've figured out what is in a way a right balance for after. Uh, and, and I'll share this in a sec. So two and a half years of only drinking. To other person, it might be two months, two and a half months. It doesn't matter right now. It's just we have this time of only drinking, but this is not the pranic journey long term. As well as not eating or not drinking at all is not the immediate pranic journey that we do from a person that comes from regular eating. This is already Breatharian level four. And if someone wants to get there to a person that doesn't eat or doesn't drink, or maybe drink only water, it's a state to get to, but baby steps, guys. <laughs> baby steps, like we said, you know, don't try to jump there because sometimes I just see people like really fall on their face, metaphorically, yeah? If we try to jump too high, too quick, too big, too, too far, pff, bam. So really let's take it graduate, stabilize the level three. And if we go, if we wanna go from there, Let's go to level four. I had a dear friend that is level four. Uh, I, had, I had a dear friend that is level four after 15 years being in level three. And he said to me, Tal, you would see one day you would want to go uh, all the way as well. And I said to him, you know what, maybe, but I don't think so. I love food, food is wonderful. You know, I love the taste, I love the textures, I love the society, I love being in different countries and, and, and finding and exploring, you know, all of this is great, but I just don't want it on a daily basis. So for me, long term, what I see the balanced way to keep the Breatharian level three, after we finish the period of only liquids, in a way to like reset ourselves and to reset the whole habits, this is why we have the only liquids for a time, is to eat maybe like one or two, maximum of three days in your week. Because when we do so, between one to three, it's not the majority of our week. And when we have that and we can allow ourselves to enjoy this, but not in the majority of our week, it keeps more balance towards the pranic engine. Now in eating days, I don't mean now eat three meals a day. Usually you would eat a meal a day. Sometimes you might have a meal and a snack. Sometimes you might have two meals. Wow, you went crazy, you want, you know? but. But with that as well, no judgment. Let's say you had a day that you had three meals. Don't think you ruined your journey. Don't yeah. think that anything is wrong, you know? So yeah. this is a journey of really softening and connecting with our hearts and releasing all the borders and boundaries that are more sharp, you know, into more rounded corners and loving ones. <laughs> so true. Cool. So, so basically, uh, I, to sum it up, one, it's a... Um, gradual journey to it's a hybrid journey you can go on prana and on food so from time to time and back on prana you do not lose either your state of consciousness or your capability to be nourished in that way three um, it's best though to keep a reasonable rhythm with being on prana so at least four days a week so that you can uh, kick in that uh, hybrid engine and you keep your, your, your system quite pure or purified, you know, let it purify in the, in, the, in the days where you don't eat so that you're, you're still nourished in that way along the, this, this process. And it might take a while until you're fully food free and liquid free from from what you said. So for those who are new to this topic, the level three is to be on liquids with no food and level four is no liquids, no food, uh, according to some people's categorization. And uh, very few of the people that we know are now without food <laughs> or liquids. We have had some people in the conferences of the Pranic Festivals or the Pranic Consciousness Summit but most people choose to stay at the level of still taking liquids with uh, the pranic journey. What's the name of the person who stayed 15 years and then moved into level four? I'm curious. Elitum. Ah, <laughs> there you go. We just had him, had him a few days ago in the conference, yeah. Beautiful, so something, something about what you shared, Christiana, level three is not staying only on liquids. Mm. Level three means having the freedom of choice, what we want, 
if we want to have food, let's enjoy food. If we want to drink, let's drink. If we want to be dry, let's be dry. The fun, for me, this is the long-term pranic journey. This is where I take people to. This is where I guide them to, to reach that state, that state of freedom that we can choose. But some tricky things over there, if we think, because I've seen sometimes people think, okay, I can choose, and I choose to eat daily. <laughs> You know, and, and they still think they might have the pranic uh, engine more open, but when they do so, they close on the pranic engine a little bit more. So it's important to know, this is why I give this uh, three days as, as a recommended max. But again, we got back to there is regular and there is like out of regular. Let's say you had a week that you ate, uh, yet you ate four times, you ate five times. You know, I had a, a trip with my family to Turkey uh, almost half a year ago, and I ate six out of seven days. <gasps> Crazy me, you know? <laughs> so this is like, it was heavy on me a little bit when I got back uh, home. So I wanted to do like some reset days, like dry days, uh, uh, fasting, what people call. As pranic people, it's not fasting anymore. It's just dry days, reset days, no food, no water. Um, but as long as it's out of our routine, let's not have a big deal or a big drama out of it. Sometimes people are really trying to follow rules. Okay, I ate five uh, days this week. Oh my God, maybe the prana is ruined or things like that. Let's drop that, guys. You know, let's drop that. It's not necessary. See your routine and see what is out of your routine. Out of your routine, play, enjoy, but don't let it be every second week out of your routine. You know, when it's really out of your routine. But in your routine, try to keep up until like those more or less two, three times to have it in a more balanced way. Yes. And it's also so good to be in tune with what you need and how you need to interact with yourself and with the world so that eventually it's really even not a routine, it's a flow. Exactly. So uh -huh. know, that's where I'm at, at least. And I'm going to share some of my journey too. That, that's an interactive uh, festival. So at the moment, I just know, you know, I just know when to just not eat or drink anything and that's something necessary when my body has the transmission the state of being pranic in larger groups or in even the countries or or areas planetary areas that i'm working with and then when i'm uh, in a more normal state i can take juice or smoothies uh, made of plants and uh, plants and fruits and when i'm in a um, having fun state but or sharing state which is more rare these days i'm i can take some solid food but not much like a fistful and it's mostly nuts or um, salad based things or sometimes fries or some types of potato that grounds and shifts my my frequency to something more bearable for the people around me <laughs> because in a, in no food no liquid state i'm quite weird vibrationally compared to general society and uh, and you just know you i don't set a routine i don't even think like when people ask me how long did you stay how many days in a row did you stay without drinking or eating how many days in a row did you stay without taking any solid food I say, you know, I don't remember. I don't think of this thing and I'm, I'm not, I don't measure, I don't calculate. You know, I know I feel much better with liquids or blended stuff. I put everything in a blender and drink it. And I, I drink my salads, I say, you know, to people. And, but uh, I don't calculate that. I'm not monitoring that. The divinity in me just knows what to do. You know, it's just not necessary for me to, I'm not aiming even towards a state, be it pranic or not pranic. <laughs> you know, as long as you're in balance and you're conscious, you're there, you're good. <laughs> you can just go on and keep breathing, you know. Uh, that's what I always recommend, you know. But um, trying to monitor your body, though, and keep the routine of always stay in touch with your body, that's something very good. And he'll tell you what he needs, yeah. Yeah, and you know, it starts, I feel that it's good to start from some kind of a more monitoring and more routining, and then we just, it comes into a flow. Mm -hmm. And when it comes into a flow, it's just like how you beautifully described it, that we can dance in between states. 
Mm-hmm. And and as well, I want to uh, give some more points if people like, because some of them maybe not know. So if in, we talk about two, three, one, two, three eating days, so the rest would be drinking days. Drinking days, at least for me, wouldn't mean now drink our meals. Wouldn't mean like, okay, let's drink uh, breakfast, let's uh, blend uh, uh, lunch, and let's now drink something heavy for uh, evening, for supper. You know, it's just, but from second hand, this is from first hand, from second hand, enjoy your drinks. If you want to have a smoothie, if you want to have something blended, enjoy it. If you even want to have a soup, that is like the most extreme for me. So enjoy it if you want. But as well, see that you don't do it daily. See that you don't do it out of hunger, which is the most important. So you want substitute. Okay, instead of eating something when I'm hungry, I'm drinking something when I'm hungry. Mm. So to really have this cleared, uh, if you have any hunger uh, feeling coming up, we have different kind of nourishment meditations or we have different ways of how to deal with hunger when it comes up or just even to let it come and go as a wave. And then when it went, to drink out of your joy compass out of enjoyment and not out of a necessity or a need that you think like, okay, maybe I need this uh, potassium or vit- vitamin A, or now let's blend this for protein or it's endless. You know, in the panic journey, we don't need to go there. Just enjoy your drinking. People ask me sometimes, so how do we know when to drink? You know, we're regular to drink when we're hungry, we're regular or to eat when we're hungry or to eat or drink when we need something healthy, etc. And right now, how? Your joy compass. Go with your joy compass because it would bring your pranic intake up. <laughs> So that would be my recommendations for people in the panic journey. And besides the eating days and the drinking days, so recommended to do it like once a week, at least, or maybe more or less, if sometimes you skip the week, a reset day, like a dry day, what people can call fast, not eating, not drinking day. And when we have this in our week, it just balances. It just balances the pranic intake. Sometimes we have uh, like, not regular. If I, I usually now eat one, two, three times a week. But a couple of months ago, I didn't feel to, and I was like almost two months again, only drinking. Or next or last week, spontaneously, I started a dry day in Saturday. And then I just went into Sunday, still dry. Monday, I felt okay, I just want to be still dry. And I ended up four and a half days dry. Spontaneously, I didn't plan them, I didn't think of them too much. And we just continue our lifestyle. We don't need to, okay, now I stop because I'm fasting. So I need to rest, et cetera. No, it's part of our lifestyle as pranic beings, you know? We can enjoy the dancing in between the states. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And uh, to also know that it's much easier to transition between the pranic, and the pranic and the hybrid, you know, when you purify. For example, I use, if I, if I ate something and I feel I have something in my stomach or in my gut, you know, which is weird for me, it feels a little heavy as I'm more used to liquids. Uh, then you can purify it. I, u- I use uh, sour cabbage juice. I just drink it and it washes everything away. And then it's much easier for you to stay stable and not to have any discomfort in your dry days or in your days mm-hmm. of n- not eating. You just don't, n- you don't have any restlessness. Yeah. When your body is purified from the food and other the things also that it's stored uh, in the days that you have been eating toxins mainly. When you cleanse the toxins immediately, you can stay dry or you can stay in the full pranic state for a longer time. Yeah. Yeah. And you need to know oneself. You need to know yourself, like every one of us, because some of us, we have more sensitive uh, bodies or tummies, like bellies, you know, and, and some of us are energetic, more sensitive. Some of us, uh, has sensitivities, but over there, we're really good. I, and, and I share with you about myself. I feel that I can eat. It's okay for me. It doesn't bring me down. I feel I can be dry for several of days. It's okay for me. It doesn't bring me too much up. Like I already like in these years, maybe I just find my equilibrium no matter where I am, you know? Uh, and this is, but this is like my journey. Other people might be more sensitive. So every one of us, we need to really know where we are, how we are, and then by that, how we treat with ourselves, what is most supporting for us. This is a, a little bit of self-exploring because there is no one paradigm fits it all. You know, India, one, one shirt, one size, fits it all. <laughs> so not like this. It's more like custom made, like your beautiful thing, you know, that you've made on you, <laughs> the rainbow one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, tailor, I tailor my life as I tailor my clothes now. And I, I love feel- it, Christiana adapting and being flexible and being in a 
in a flow, like we said, is the thing now. Instead of being breath aiming to be breatharians, I always say to people, aim to be flexitarians. And the more you're flexible, the more you go towards a state of flow and a state of being nourished and no hunger and yeah. uh, fun also. Yeah, and for me, the word breatharianism, it holds some kind of an energy that I, usually I don't call myself breatharian. I call myself a pranic person because of the confusion. When a person called vegetarian, he would only eat vegetables. Fruitarian would only eat fruits. Breatharian makes the misconsumption for me of a level four breatharian. But most of breatharians that we call ourselves in the world are actually pranic nourished people, not breatharian, only breath, but mm. also from breath and just having the hybrid engine. And this is for me the change, Christiana. Nine years ago, I thought I'm a breatharian. Today, I understand that I'm not a breatharian. I'm not a full breatharian. I'm a level three breatharian, which is more called a pranic nourished person yeah. that is nourished from life energy. And as well can enjoy food, drinks, but just not overindulge so we don't close on the energetic engine. So we have this inner equilibrium within ourselves. Yeah, and it's very good that you said this, this phrase, nourished by life energy. So even the breatharians that are fully, you know, the, the ones who are on prana, that's how I call them, who are yeah. fully on prana, not taking foods or liquids, they're not nourished by breath or exactly. by breath. They're nourished by this life force that is in ourselves, that is that is beaming through each cell cell of ours and from our heart chakra. And the breath helps people self-regulate their inner state just to stay more in that flow state or theta state or meditative state or inner peace state that you can regulate with the breath, but it doesn't nourish you. Yeah. This is so important. And I humbly say something in here because I know many people are looking for techniques, you know, and, and in here, in the journey, when I initiate people, initiate people, I do give certain techniques, but I tell them as well, a deeper truth beyond the techniques. Guys, it's not the techniques. <laughs> it's our life energy. It's our life force. And it is our practice. Because like, for example, why we do uh, we, we still do pranic nourishment meditations in initiation and after initiation, why we still stay only in liquids, why we still do different things that support our journey, because we are so habited and so entangled in the old paradigm of food and the necessity and health and science and consciousness about it, etc. So to change all of this and to step into a new paradigm, we need to detach all these old entanglements. And we do so by the pranic nourishment meditations. But it's not that the breath over there is the most important thing, it's the affirmations that we give to ourselves day by day using the breath, using life energy, using visualization. And as well, the reason we only stay in liquids, because sometimes people, you know, I had people share with me, okay, Tal, you know, I just finished the process and I know that eventually I would eat like one, two, three times a week. So I'm starting now, okay? <laughs> and I'm like, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> good luck it wouldn't work uh because just we still didn't give this freedom to detach all the old systems and entanglements and this is why we have this time of only liquids just to make this free and to if we detached others so to right now deprogram those and reprogram new programs that are more welcome for us right now and this is very important, Christiana, as well, when we finish this more or less two months, three months, whatever we want with only liquids, not going directly into three times eating a week, the way I guide people. So, so for the first month to only have one day that you enjoy, if you can, only one meal. So it wouldn't get out of hand. And as well of how to step into that. So I have a whole protocol of like really asking ourselves different questions, investigating, feeling different kind of compasses. Like I've talked on the joy compass. It's just not the topic of today because it's for more advanced uh, people in the journey. But it's like really different compasses of how to check in when it's a right time to transition from the period of only liquids to the period of like bringing back food as a friend in our life, as an entity in our life. So it could be in a peaceful way and not like in a crazy way. <laughs> it take us out of balance. Yeah. And uh, always, it's always important to stay in tune with your body. Because if you've Whatever. done three, if you've done, from my experience, you know, 
Well, if I've done uh, 30 days on uh, mostly half a glass of juice every couple of days, yeah. if I've done that, or some days on no, no food, no liquids, and uh, I, I, when I tried one of these days to eat physical food, my body just went in pain. So uh -huh. you, you can't just start without checking with your body. You know, I was literally crawling on the floor. Yeah. You, you, yeah. like, I was praying <laughs> for it to stop uh, and, and it's important that you stay in tune with your body and see what it really needs and if you've done one month or three months like you said on, on just liquids or, or dry you can't just get back really you can't to just get back to three meals a day it's just impossible to do it without pain for exactly. from my experience and the experience of all the pranic people that I've met, and I've met quite a few hundreds of them, <laughs> I mean, unless you want to hurt yourself, you must just check with your body constantly what it needs. And maybe it needs just half or one quarter of the food that you were taking before. Then maybe it needs something much, much more lighter than you would have taken before and always stay in tune with that. Otherwise, people just go on, oh, I'm having hip pain, or I'm having a neck pain, or I'm having stuck limbs or whatever. Yeah, that's from overcrowding your system with yeah. food that you didn't need most of the times, yeah. Totally. You know, Christiana, it really brings me to the, to the deep understanding of how much important it is Again, to have a complete journey, not just an initiation, because sometimes people come and they say like, yeah, you know what? Uh, like, I don't need initiation, I'll be good. I don't, I don't need integration, I'll be good. I don't need preparation, I'll be good. And I don't guide in any other way. When people come to ask my guidance, I don't give them the choice. We do preparation, we do initiation, and we're doing integration because they don't know where they're putting themselves in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it was like temptations. People really said to me, here, take, you know, like I, I pay you, just do initiation, let's start now. And I refused. I said to them, no, you know, I didn't say them in their face, but like I say, I don't work for you. I work for you, <laughs> you know, I work for God. So for me, this is what I need to be in alignment with. And if I am tempted to start a process with a person that don't want integration or initiation and only wants that, I would lose this person, go to another uh, person that guides because I don't believe in this. I believe that I put you in a place that is not right. Not for you, not for me, not for creation, not for all of our karma. It's just not right. So I need to take my responsibility to know that at least I've served it in the best way. And from there, the person could really choose. And this saves so much suffering for people because they don't know where they're going for. Only in the end, they always say, Tal, without this, like, it would be a totally different journey. Some of them say, like, without this, we would not continue. And I just say to people, if you're doing this kind of a journey, take support. No matter with who, no matter where, just have someone that you trust, someone that is experienced, someone that you love, because those are important in this kind of guidance, because it is guiding life energy, which is love. <laughs> yes. So it, those are important. And if you find a person like this, have a complete journey, have a preparation, have an initiation and have an integration. Otherwise, for me, you're just losing your time. You might be losing your money. You might be disappointed eventually because you just went through an amazing process, but then you climbed here and very quickly after two days, two weeks, two months, bam, it's out of your life. And it was just another story in your life instead of this story that changed your life. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And the, what, I, what I encourage people to look towards is not the to change their focus. I encourage them uh, because many people that are coming from other processes, from other guides, you know, from 21 yeah. for eight days, for 10 days, for nine days, they have done a process. Mm -hmm. They come to me because they haven't integrated. They don't know what to do at home. They don't know what's the next step. Like I've started binging. I've started eating too much. My body hurts. What should I do? I cannot stop eating because I'm feeling hungry or I'm feeling discomfort, yet I'm feeling a lot of guilt for eating. What should I do? And that's where we start to work with the practices to be in that state of alignment, not, not the state of not eating, the state of alignment, of energy alignment, 
when you are fine with whatever you do, you are uh, centered in whatever happens in your life. And from there, you feel nourished. <laughs> oh. That's, the path. <laughs> That's the path. You don't aim at stopping the food. That's such a childish, I'm sorry, but I have to say it. That's such a childish game. It's like the ABC on a spiritual path. Like anyone can fast, guys. That's not the point. <laughs> like the, the, every, all the saints and sages and even uh, laymen have fasted, you know, every once in a while in this world. And, and then they got back to the craziness, maybe. That's not where you want to go. <laughs> You're, you don't just want to add another badge on your shoulders or chest. The point is to be in balance. And from there, of course, you feel to eat less because you're no longer hungry. <laughs> That's what I guide people to do. If somebody comes to me and says, I want to stop eating, I'm like, yeah, you're in your ego. I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> There's a beautiful straight sentence. Away, straight away. I don't, we don't need people to have more goals or targets. We don't need more achievers in this world. We need more balanced people. That's mm -hmm. where... Speaking of solutions in a time of change, the topic of today, yeah. we don't need more successful and achieve, achieved people, not even in the spiritual path. <laughs> we need people that are in balance and in compassion and in love. And that's what we're, you know, hoping to, to bring in the world if, 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 if ever we, we bring a target, you know? And this is a much deeper success and achievement. That's the ultimate success and achievement. Like just aim for that and everything is given to you. All the cities, all the superpowers, if you want any, but you won't want anything. That's the cool stuff. You don't want anything in that state. You're just free. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm, uh, you know, suggesting to people and where I'm heading towards with, with the, with the, um, process and post-process as well because otherwise it's just yet another path to judging yourself and discouragement and whatnot <laughs> there is a beautiful sentence that says you cannot fast your way into pranic lifestyle into pranic living now it's exactly this like we cannot just stop eating and that's it we're pranic and uh, with that if a person comes to me and say like i want to stop eating so I'm asking, I'm asking motives. I'm asking people why, what's there? Because some of them, they want to prove others. Some of them, because maybe they have a health issue or they want to lose weight. But mm -hmm. some of them, because they just feel it's not for them anymore. They just feel they want to go to the next level. So it's okay for me if they say, I want to stop eating. But if they are uh, okay to receive more things around it that are uh, not just superficial, I would say. And if their motives are there, so I understand. Christiana, myself, I wanted to stop eating as well. <laughs> it's okay for me, but I didn't want this again, just to prove someone or to, I don't know, do, I, I wanted it because it was my calling, because it was my calling to go into my next level through this tool, through this instrument. So that's for sure. That, that's another thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so for people who have joined new, because there's more people coming in, uh, just know that you have a chat box and you can ask questions and use it. Great, <laughs> because great. So I, I want to do something like this now, if it's okay. So uh, we talk about solutions in time of change. And actually, uh, you don't know, <laughs> I didn't share this with you, but I sent the message to many groups I'm in and I gave them some topics I'm going to touch today yeah. around emotional uh, uh, eating or consuming, uh, eating, drinking, um, about uh, preparing to a pranic reset or a pranic journey, uh, about different relationships in our life, about balance, about trust. So I want to touch these topics as well. Sounds uh, great. But maybe because all of those are related now to the time just change and how it's general for life, but even specifically now, it's very, very, very significant. With that before, maybe we'll do a small stop up until now and to just take some questions. Let's see where we are. If people have some yes. questions before we uh, dive deeper in. Yes, yes. I uh, Because there's no questions still in the chat box. I have a question for the audience. Like, why are you interested in planning nourishment and in this festival? It would be good to know why are you here? And you can type in the chat box this thing and uh, type your questions as well as Tal is now opening the door for uh, more intercommunication. 
And if you, um, I will send you the link to uh, again because the other one was, um, you know, no longer working. And you can see the chat box yourself as well. Okay, you great. Can. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, can you tell them where they write to the people that just yes, joined? Yes, so everyone, everyone who has just joined, you have a screen uh, where this video is displayed. And if you're on desktop, the chat box is to the right of that screen. And if you're on iPhone, you have to scroll down on YouTube or the um, landing page that you're watching on. And as you scroll down, you'll see the chat box and there you can post your uh, chat, uh, questions and feel free to ask your questions. Yeah. So uh, the YouTube that you sent before is not working. So the YouTube we... that I've sent now is the one that is on the landing page. I'm, I'm just sending it again just to make sure that everybody has it. Mm, but you sent me one before. Um, ah, I think I think this is working as well. Yes, both are both. working. That's the one who's... Great, right. No, I mean, I don't need to resend it to all the groups now. Uh, well... I sent already, I I already the one that you sent me before. Okay. If you can resend, just resend to make sure, because I really don't know what's happening on the internet right now. I thought I was getting it, <laughs> you know, and that I understood it all. But th this today it has started doing things that are way above my um, capability of un, un, understanding it. So now I'm just posting again to you the link so that I'm sure that it is working. <laughs> and that's the one that I'm watching now and I'm watching us speaking there so surely it is working. Great. The one before was having some interruptions. I don't know what's happening, but surely this is the one who's going very well. I got you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll post in this. In the meantime, as we're doing these tech stuff, feel free to fill the chat with questions so that you have, oh, good. We have some questions already or my, uh, or some comments. I will just read you the comments first so that all the audience can hear them. Tall, you are the king. <laughs> then another one is you are love, big love. Tall, you are awesome. I love you. Uh, somebody says, I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> now with my whole family is home and they eat constantly and I have to cook almost all day long. How can I stay on this path easily? Uh, another person said reset tall. The one, one second, one second. Let's, let's take one by one. If it's okay. not response, if it's questions, so let's take one by one. Um, so, uh, did she, uh, do you have her name over there? Orit. Orit Sharon. I Sharon. Hey, Orit. I love you. Uh, okay, great, great, great. Because I wanted to know if it's someone that have already done the process or haven't done the process. So can you uh, uh, ask the question again now? Oh, the question again uh, is uh, she's cooking for the family all day now that she's at home and everybody's at home. So she wants to know how she can stay on the path with all the cooking and all the family. Not simple to say, I'm sorry, Orit, I love you and all of us, but discipline. <laughs> simple discipline, but discipline that is not a discipline of like, I hold myself, discipline that is based on what I really want. So what I would recommend is actually asking myself, and this is beautiful what you just asked, Christiana, because later on I'm talking about uh, getting into a pranic journey. And I wanted to ask all the audience, why do you want to go into a pranic journey? So, so we're, we're just sync and link. And it's right now linking or it to your question. Why are you on a pranic journey? Because when you don't ask yourself this question and you're just food depriving yourself when everybody's eating and when you're cooking to everyone and there is so much uh, temptations, you might feel down from it. But when you ask yourself this question, it's like, it's resetting you. You are asking actually, why am I doing this journey? And I really uh, recommend contemplate about that, write about it, record about it if you want, even maybe a video testimonial yourself is just for yourself, you know, like take the, the phone, just make a video of yourself. So you could uh, have a live testimonial for that. That is not just a thought that comes and goes, you know, and you forget. 
like really put it more uh, uh, like anchored in life, tangible in life. So ask yourself, why am I doing this journey? And give yourself wise, 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 wise. Don't be cheap, okay? Don't be quick. <laughs> give yourself the wise you have over there. Next time when you cook and you're about to have something just for the right now moment enjoyment, take that list. <laughs> Look at it. Understand with yourself why do you do this journey. And this leads to much easier discipline, which is not based on uh, depriving ourselves, which is based on something that you actually want more. In case you want it more. If not, enjoy with your family. <laughs> and, uh, and anyway, just a sec, anyway, we can enjoy with the family, it just doesn't mean that we have to enjoy with the family through the food or taste it always when we cook. Because as Orit, as you can imagine, and many of us home, guiding so many people around the world, I've guided parents, I've guided grandparents, I've guided children, I've guided like people from all the different ages that I've guided chefs in restaurants that cook for their living. And you know, they could say, okay, no, I'm a chef or I'm, I'm a cooking uh, mother, a cooking father, like for my children, I have to, I have to cook, I have to taste. No, you don't. And what I see time after time that when uh, people have chosen this consciously and made this decision or they already established well established in the pranic journey. So they taste or, or uh, join the family once in a while, every once in a while, like one, two, three days a week, not every time that they cook. What happens is their food actually becomes better. That's crazy. But they're just let's think of it. They're more connected to themselves. So they don't have to taste or to or to really uh, I don't improve all the time. They just put their magic, they put their love, they are putting their prana into the food and then that's it, it's served. And time after time, I hear parents, I hear the chefs that were there saying that the people that eat say, oh my God, this is so tasty. What have you done? What, what went different? And they're laughing inside of themselves because they didn't even taste, but they know what went different, you know? So this is just an invitation if we feel so. Thank you so much for bringing this to the next level, the level of connection where you know exactly what to put on a plate and in your life without even making trial and error. <laughs> I will read the next things while you're uh, doing uh, your thing there. Um, so some people have replied to our question, why is they're interested in this festival? Uh, they say, I joined Pranic uh, Festival online to see wonderful people. Another person says, I am drawn to Pranic Nourishment because it feels like a natural step of my step of my spiritual path. I'm approaching, uh -oh. <laughs> I'm approaching it with open curiosity. So these are the answers that we have so far. The mm -hmm. questions that we have so far are, I believe in this path and I wish to deepen my experience of joy through means of internal creations to external expression. Again, 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 can you say it again? I didn't get you. Okay. <laughs> uh, huh. I believe in this path and I wish to deepen my experience of joy through means of internal creation to external expressions, moving away from relying on external materials to create pleasure or distraction. That's somebody's reason. Mm, and, that's it there's no questions so far people do you have questions like that take advantage of this guy's presence and uh, <laughs> you know just go ahead and ask and i will add to what you said because it was beautiful what you've answered to oren is that also when with family and cooking or having you know meals with them it's the most important thing is that you stay in a happy state Mm -hmm. so whatever it brings you happiness is the most important thing like if it brings you happiness to stay at the table and put two leaves of salad and a few nuts mm -hmm. on your plate and chew with them that won't disrupt your spiritual rhythm it will mm -hmm. not break your consciousness mm -hmm. into pieces you're still gonna be the divinity that you are and you're gonna be a happy divinity in a physical body <laughs> instead of being frustrated sitting there in a corner watching everyone having fun at the table and you not being able to participate that would deplete you emotionally and it will be you know 
for the general state, not just the physical body, for the general state of emotional, mental, and physical uh, thriving, it will just detract a little bit from your pranic rhythm. So yeah. when you go with your fam when I go with my family, either I make myself a smoothie of plant-based stuff, or I take a bit of whatever, you know, they're eating that is vegan, either salad, some salad leaves, or, you know, some whatever I can take from that joint table. And I put it on my plate and I'm happy to just have it there, you know? And sometimes I taste from it, sometimes not so much, but everybody's relaxed around me because I have a plate in front of me. That's important. <laughs> totally. <laughs> If you're seen with a plate in front of you, people are instantly more relaxed, usually in big gatherings as well. <laughs> yeah. And if you taste something from time to time, they, they won't monitor you maybe, but you are just have the freedom to join their gathering without being under pressure and without feeling secluded, which is much more beneficial for mm -hmm. the emotional state as well. Exactly, that's, that's a really good point. And uh, uh, again, it is uh, just tricky to to still have the inner discernment to not overplay with this, like not to do it like every day and say like, okay, it wouldn't take my frequency down, but then I do it daily, and then this sleeve becomes into a whole uh, meal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because once we go uh, into that eating uh, uh, mindset, some some people really are just good with two leaves, and some people because we don't have any more hunger and fullness, they would have two plates now, which is also oh. okay. I don't judge, but if so, at least limit it. You know, I don't, I don't get into your plate. I don't care what you do, how much you do, you know? So enjoy yourself, just make sure you're enjoying yourself, but try to have it more as in a, some kind of a supporting infrastructure for the pranic lifestyle. Mm. Great. Now in the uh, chat for a second, yes. uh, I put my uh, WhatsApp and my email. Maybe you can share this with people because maybe Absolutely. some of them I suddenly start come and go, etc. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, the next things in the chat box are like this. I was interested in this process from the beginning because I felt food can't fill me for real. I'm mm -hmm. searching different way of a different way of feeling whole without something from uh, uh, from uh, external. Somebody, uh, uh, and she continues. I also rarely eat out of hunger. Most of the time, I eat out of habit. I hate to do things that are making no sense to me. <laughs> Another people, the person says, great tall, yes, without integration, there's very low chances of success. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. And somebody asked an important question. Do you think there's a special meaning for the pranic life now in these um, times, um, in, in these special times of, of people having some illness? Um, beautiful question. We'll end with this one, the questions for now, so we can get as well to the topics, more deep into the topics. Um, it's funny, you've asked this question, but then you, you've added the word illness in the end. So <laughs> it's not you, it's the question. But, uh, and then I took it in a different way. So is, is pranic journey important in these special times? <gasps> yes. <laughs> so <Why>? uh, <laughs> what do you say? Why? <laughs> so, so getting into it, but but now let's first answer the question of the person with in this time of illness. Uh, ah, okay, now I get it. Not physically illness, but like, uh, okay, okay, okay. I, I've thought that the person talk about some kind of illness that he has. No, so, people have flu all over the world. I call it the flu. That's yeah. how I call it. I don't use their word <clears throat> yeah. over charge. So yeah. the flu <laughs> is yeah. happening to some. Let's see why is pranic journey important in this flu time? <laughs> okay, so I'll take it a little bit in the flu time, but much more in a bigger perspective. So in the flu time, of course, it puts our body in a healthier state. When we don't put so much on our body, it doesn't decrease our life energy. It doesn't take from our life energy. And then we're just healthier and stronger to deal with any flus that are coming by us. Um, but now let's even take it in a deeper way, because uh, in this time of illness is not just the flu, is the illness that we see around the world of power, control, uh, interests, uh, people that try to navigate uh, different maneuvers in the world, 
uh, suppressing freedom, etc. So uh, this is more important because uh, coming a little bit to the beginning of our journey here, we shared about every pranic being is like a lighthouse. It's like a lighthouse in their own realm and in their in the people around them, and as well in the world. You don't really need to someone to to see you to uh, have the effect of your light on the entire uh, one that we are, the collective that we are. So for me, this is times that are super important. This is why as well I devoted myself totally for that because I was doing more things, uh, enjoying more things. I still keep on playing music, which is something I love, <laughs> uh, but uh, I do I do it less a little bit than before because sometimes I was really like making some of my living out of that. And right now I totally devoted myself only to that as, as my life work and my life project and mission. And with that, I can do more things that I love, but more as hobbies, you know? And, and I do so because I understand that this is significant times. And one of my aim, one of my visions is that in certain years from now, I don't know, because again, it's not a business oriented uh, mission, right? It's so, we don't know, it's, it's God, it's creation. So I don't know to put it, would it happen in two years? Would it happen in 20 years? I don't know to put a cap for it, like to, to capsule it. But my vision is that as there is a vegetarian and there is a vegan, there would just be a pranic person. And it would just be regular for people. It wouldn't be, ooh, big drama. It wouldn't be like, whoa, so many questions. No, we would spread more and more and more around the world because of the grassroots work that we do right now, integrating people in a holistic process and there are more of us, like I feel Christiana, you're in this as well. And this is so important for me because I, some guides are not like that. And, and I love those guides so much. It's not important. I just don't agree with their way of only doing an initiation. Come for X amount of days and you'll be pranic. Nonsense. It wouldn't happen, guys. At least in my humble opinion. If you don't believe my humble opinion, try it for yourself. See what happens, <laughs> you know? My humble opinion is take a holistic guidance, no matter with who. Just connect with the person, love them, and feel you trust them. And if so, take a journey with them. Ask them for a holistic journey. Ask them to prepare yourself. Ask them to initiate you and ask them to integrate you, which is the most important. And when we do so, we spread so much more light in the world and so much more open, conscious beings that are sharing themselves. And this is evolution for me. So mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very important in these times. Yes, and it's uh, it's it's actually... The most to integrate something after an initiation in the spiritual journey or anywhere else is the most important phase, I believe, because an initiation mm -hmm. is what is something that opens your your system, your energy system towards something. But if you don't integrate it in your life is like you received the million dollars, but you, you're not using it. That's the initiation without the integration. You have received some, you, you have received a million dollars, but you don't have access to it. It's somewhere in a safe, yeah. <laughs> somewhere, and you're not using and you're still feeling poor. That's the initiation without integration. And to, 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 for the ones asking, we're starting a pranic process of initiation on Sunday for eight, uh, of integration and initiation on Sunday for eight days together. And somebody in this gathering, Elaine, who has just shared with us, has had this process with us and she has healed the virus while she was in this process in four days. Like, wow. what? <laughs> so, you know, and it's very simple. We go on juices, we go on not fasting, but pranic mode. And uh, we go and then integrating the joy and the light and the happiness in our life and the balance. I'm not aiming for people to stop eating at all. It's, it's for people, it's for people that uh, have already done a process or for first timers as well? Everyone. Everyone. And is there any uh, dry days in that or no dry days? Like no food, no water at all in several of the days? I don't focus people on dry or not dry. I focus them on staying centered. <laughs> So I don't make people do anything. I just, with the meditations that we do daily and with the um, systems and, and, and uh, you know, a different level of understanding things that we explain every day and with the um, uh, detox also methods that we share and that people are doing through the eight days, they just go naturally in a state of flow. 
So somebody after the eight days, she was 21 days or 30 days, I don't remember, on just liquids or, or blended stuff. Not because I recommended that, because her body has felt this way and she mm. was feeling her body. So everyone learns not to stop eating, but to start feeling into themselves and feeling connected. That's my pranic process that I'm always <laughs> doing with people. And I've been sharing it for seven years now, since 2013. And it has worked with more long-term results of being pr people being balanced, you know? Yeah. That, that's the thing that I always recommend, you know, instead of focusing on how many days you don't eat, how many days you've stayed dried, I'm focusing on how many days you've stayed in your center. Beautiful. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah. if there's questions on that, we're, we're free to, to answer. And people are asking you okay. stuff. Do you want to continue? But I want, I want Christiana, let's take now, if, if you want another one, a last question, but I want to dive into some of the materials. Okay. So um, let's see, uh, just a second. Ta -ta -ta. I feel the main reason I eat is from lack of inspiration or connection to a deeper purpose. That's what I was saying in life currently. What process would do, what process would you recommend for inviting in and creating my own life meaning? Yeah, I think that's what we're talking about here. You know, going instead of going in a state of not eating, going in a state of, connection and purpose Paul can add something on that too and another person how can i learn prani healing I want christiana to christiana it's endless it's endless I, I really want to continue okay 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 and just to the one to respect the one that you did uh talked about um so yeah it's a really important one because as we said we cannot fast our way to pranic lifestyle and as well uh, it's not a solution for our life's problems mm. And this is why I do the preparation with people. This is why it's so important because I don't want it just to start a process. I want to see that we leveled different levels and I'm going to talk about that. This is part of uh, today's share, but that we level different aspects in their life to a certain level that we can start from uh, doing a pranic process. So in this case of, of what the woman just shared there would be more giving a focus to that before starting a pranic initiation. That, and it doesn't mean to already get into the life calling from today to tomorrow, just to see that we are on a good path towards there. Either got there before we start, either we have a good path towards there that feels resonating with the heart. Because otherwise, after the pranic journey, it would just be too much <laughs> with the heart. So we want to already come prepared beforehand. Cool. So I'm diving right now, if it's okay, to some of the topics of today. Uh, I'm before I, I uh, send something that was attached. So I send you again in here. It's more spaced up. Uh, the WhatsApp. I already the posted all ah. your details on YouTube great. and on our. Um, okay, great, 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 great. Because before I, I it was combined uh, like two of them together. So if you just mm -hmm. took them by yourself, it was great. Uh, so over there you have my WhatsApp guys. You have my email. Best is WhatsApp. I don't do Facebook. I don't do Instagram. I don't do Twitter. Uh, I don't do these things. You there don't. Might be great. I don't tweet. <laughs> no, I'm not, joking. Not, not virtually, at least. <laughs> okay, let's go. I'm yeah, joking. so if you want, best is to contact me in WhatsApp. Don't be shy. You can ask me things. You can ask me questions. I'm really here for you guys. <laughs> Great. So as for some of the topics of today, first one I want to touch would be uh, something that maybe some of us meet in these days, which is more emotional consuming. Emotional eating, emotional drinking, but it might be any kind of emotional consuming. To one person, it might be smoking cigarettes. To other person, it might be, uh, I don't know, talking all the day with the friends, like cannot be with themselves. Uh, to other person, it might be porn. To other person, it might be sports even, which is good, but you just emotional consuming because you escape out of yourself. Um, but I want to right now, all of those are important, but I want to give the example through the emotional drinking or eating. And some of my students, some of the people that know me already, they know this thing, which is very, very, very helpful. And I want to give it because it's in a way uh, some kind of a tool. First is to understand that there is some kind of an escapism. Some of us know that, some of us are conscious to that, some of us are not conscious, just something emotional comes up. And then we go and we eat something, drink something, smoke something, whatever, 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 whatever. And we don't really make the, the connections. So first base is to make the connection that we're actually escaping out of something. And then we want to see if we are ready and ripe to deepen in this a little bit. Because <clears throat> if we escape out of something, 
uh, there is this kind of a graph that I'm showing. Let's say like there is this graph in here and this graph in here. So uh, in here, what happens is that we are start feeling down and something emotional happens and we don't want to get in here. In here is like rock bottom of the feeling. We feel like very down. So we don't want to get there. So what happens is that, the, and this is time, yeah? So we just like time starts, we are uh, feeling a little bit down and what happens here, boom, we escape. In this point, we are doing something. Let's eat something, let's drink something, let's do whatever, just not to go to that feeling. But what happens there is that we go, we escape to that thing, whatever it is. And then what happens in the majority of, of uh, the people experiences when they do that? Maybe they overate, they oversmoked, they overdid sports, they overdid something. And then they just feel not so good after that. So what happens is that we are trying to avoid not feeling uh, that feeling of, ooh, it's, it doesn't feel good. But then we meet it after we have compensated with the emotional whatever thing that was there, eating, drinking, etc. So the thing is that over here, we have a split. In here, we have a split. Either we are escaping the feeling and we're going and we consume something. So for some moments, it elevates our mood, but then it brings us down again. So when we escaped and we're already here, usually we don't have a choice. It's like, that's it. Game's over. We didn't go into the feeling. We compensated with something else. And then we just would feel, in the majority of the times, not so good, even maybe awful <laughs> to some extent to some people um, after these kind of things. But in here, we have the choice. In this split, we can either choose to escape right now, which is also might be a conscious choice and it's okay, or to deepen in. In this place that it splits, if we decide to deepen in, the thing is that we would uh, meet feelings that are not so comfortable for us. And sometimes I see them as like uh, in every each one of us, we have like some kind of a neglected uh, children that are in dark cellars inside of our soul. And they're sitting there, you know, because we don't give them so much attention. So they're just sitting there and in a way waiting for us to have this, to give this attention to them. And this is what we meet when we have this split. We go into these dark cellars. Now dark, not like as dark, evil or anything like that. Dark just because we don't have light over there. We don't go there so often. And those children are over there neglected and cold and they want love. <laughs> they want some attention. And sometimes what we would do if we would... Uh, have this split of feeling like, okay, I have to eat something, I have to drink something, I have to go and run, I have to do something, but we won't. We just stay with the feeling and consciously knowing what we're doing, that we're about to go into some kind of a deeper cellar. Um, what is recommended is first to stop things. Not to do this when we are uh, working, talking with someone, uh, cooking, doing whatever. Stop. Just allow yourself to stop because you are on a gold mine right now. Stop and allow yourself to just experience the feeling. Now, it might feel not so nice, but hey, life is not only about feeling nice. It's about deepening as well. And that would bring us into feeling nicer in the long term. Um, so in this split, deciding, okay, I stop what I do. I am staying with my feeling. I'm just going inside. I might meet sadness. I might feel anger. I might feel depressed. I might feel not seen, I might feel not loved, whatever child that is there for you, you know, um, he wants your attention there. And another uh, tip over there is as well to, to pay attention to our bodies because we want to pay attention to different kinds of uh, areas in our body. We might suddenly feel con con uh, construction, like contracting, okay. contraction in our belly, for example. We might feel like a burning sensation in our chest. We might feel really choked. We might feel our arms are weak. Like, so to pay attention to what our body speaks in this moment. Because when we go to this place of where the body speaks, we can investigate. Because sometimes over there, there is some kind of a trauma that is held in this place in the body. This is why I say it's a gold mine. Because not going there, we would just keep on, uh, on circulating those feelings with not going deeply into them. It doesn't mean that they would not come. They would just come, not be expressed, have their influence consciously or subconsciously. And we were like a puppet that is played with these uh, thorns, uh, not like with these uh, strings from up in a way. Uh, so if we want to get free from that, this is a really an, a, amazing opportunity. This is the gold mine.
deepening, feeling the feeling, even if it's not good, feeling where it is in the body, investigating the place in the body, really going into this place and trying to see what is connecting to me with this place. Not immediately. First, just be with it. If you feel, for example, a burning sensation in your chest, don't go there immediately. Just feel the burning sensation in your chest. If you can, maybe even uh, if you feel this, for example, right now from one to 10 on a scale, you feel it six, try to see if you can even open it a little bit more, give it a place. Because if you give it a place, it would rise up to seven, eight, maybe even nine or 10. So it really, you feel it, you're not pushing it aside. And when it, you really feel that strongly, try to see, is there any memory that is linking for me with this body sensation? with this feeling of uh, anger, sadness, not seen, not loved. When we investigate through that, suddenly we find things that we do not even believe. Some things we suppressed, some things we didn't really allow ourselves to remember because it was too painful. Now we might meet them in these moments. And if we meet them in these moments, I really wanna say it's not there to be solved. It's there to be first acknowledged. Because for a long, long time, it might, be, it might have been suppressed and we didn't even acknowledge that. And suddenly when we, give, when we give this space for it, it's like this dark, I really imagine like a dark, a, a children in a dark cellar that is sitting like that and is cold and feeling neglected and is shivering. And suddenly you, me, us, as a loving parent, okay, not our parents, not our father or mother, but our internal father and mother, us as a loving parent coming next to this child and just sitting with him. And he might be shivering and he might be cold and he might feel neglected. I am not loved. I am not seen. I feel so angry about something. I feel so suppressed. I feel so depressed. I feel so whatever. We don't say to him, hey, hey, step out. Stop feeling this. No, <laughs> it's okay for him to feel this because he feels this and this is actually us feeling it, but suppressing it in the majority of the times. So we're sitting with him and what this child wants first is just our loving presence. Presence and loving, yeah? <laughs> so we, we might ask him what he wants. Maybe maybe he's just sitting next to him, not saying nothing. Just the fact that there is someone next to him suddenly, after years maybe that he's over there alone, cold in the cellar, suddenly there is a loving presence next to him and it's already melting some of those ice layers. Maybe he would ask to put a hand on him. Maybe he would ask a hug. And when we do so, he might cry, we might cry things might rise up. If so, please give it the space. This is why I say stop things. Don't do this while you do other things, while you're doing an email or, or whatever, working. Stop your day. Look at it as a gold mine opportunity of your day if, you, if it came to you like this and, and just really dive into your feelings. And once this is like as a first uh, initiation, it was the first stage to just give loving presence, we might ask the child a little bit investigate him in a good way, not like uh, police, you know, but just investig investigate him. It's like, what is your want? How could I help you? What do you feel? Do you remember or do you know why do you feel this? It's just to investigate in these realms. And when we start to investigate in these realms, things surfacing that are amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now doing this work is deep and it's not necessarily for every day. So sometimes if we feel it's not for now and we are consciously choose to eat something, drink something, escape, you know, do it consciously. If you do it consciously, it might take the sting out of it of the self-judgment. Because, you know, today I just, I couldn't go this deep. So I go and eat something or drink something or do sports or do something instead to suppress this. But in, others day, in other days, try to be brave because there is a part that would always push us aside from this. Try to be brave and do reach this level. Uh, the alternative of eating or drinking something is great, but it's not as deep as this one and it's not as beneficial as this one. Cool. Uh, some of us would see, uh, another small thing before we move from this topic, so, this topic some of us would see that uh, we, we might have judgment. We might see this child and maybe our parent couldn't be this loving. We might judge this child or judge uh, why do we think like this? Why do we think we're not loved? Why do we think we're suppressed by someone? Why do we think we should supposed to be angry or whatever? So we start judging it or we start whipping ourselves 
for feeling that. Why am I feeling not love? Why am I feeling angry? Why am I feeling whatever? So the judge or the weeper, in a way, if we get in a deeper uh, place, why they are there, they're there for self-improvement. They're there because we want to be better. But guys, this is an old paradigm of self-improvement that it's the time for it to seize from the word and do our evolution to a different paradigm of self-improvement, which is heart-centered, which is much more soft, which is accepting ourselves no matter how we are. So even if the judge is coming or the weeper is coming, try to just observe them and not judge the judge or not weep the weeper. <laughs> But just know that they are there and it's okay that they are there and you try to just lower their volume and not give them so much space in your consciousness because they're trying to get over our experience. So they are there, it's okay, we don't kick them out, we just lower the volume and understand this is not working for me. I judged myself so many times before, it didn't make me be better. I whipped myself so many times before, it didn't make me be better. So maybe right now, today, maybe I can try a different paradigm. Just loving myself no matter how I am accepting myself no matter how I am. And this is really resonance with meeting this child over there and, and a paradigm that would serve it in a better way. That's great. And people on YouTube say the same. That's great advice. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome, dear ones. I really work with that. This is times that we have more time. So it's great. It's great to see it. And as well, more emotion things comes like eating, drinking, escapism. So it's really good time to, to find this. Mm. Cool. So I want to go into next topic, mm. um, which is uh, preparation for a pranic process. Now, uh, before that, I want to, uh, we'll just breathe through that because it's a deep subject. We cannot talk on all of that, but I want to give some inputs to people. Yes, yes. Uh, and we before I want to maybe ask, <laughs> what do you say, Christiana? We have about 15 more minutes, one five. <laughs> so uh, I want to know who in here uh, has done already a process. If any one of you, if you've done a process, uh, maybe write in the chat. If you haven't done a process, but you want to do a process, write this in the chat, just so we can see like where you're at. And I ask for your participation, if you can, because by that as well, I would understand what to share more with you guys by the crowd that we have in here. Mm -hmm. So take a, mo take a moment, write if you already done a process or if you uh, want to do a process. Yes. Uh, also, additionally, I have a question because that's been the main focus of the festival for everyone is like this. Everyone is now at home, most of the people I mean. Mm -hmm. And most of the people are faced with the situation of being at home for the first time in a long time mm -hmm. with more than two or three uh, days off. <laughs> yeah. So they've been at home for three weeks. Now they must be ver feeling very weird, most of the people. Also, there's the whole paradigm where people are getting scared, they're, they're, getting, they're feeling threatened in their safety, either with health or with wealth or with both. So that's the general situation on the planet. Uh, the question of me for all breatharians has been, for all Prani people had, that have been in the, in the um, festival so far, is how do you navigate through these times specifically? Like, what do you do? Or what do you recommend people doing as well? What's your daily practice? What's your routine? How do you stabilize in case you get into the doom and gloom of the world? What do you do? Amazing. So you know what, I'll change the order because in my order, I wanted to do the preparation for the process and the reset and then talk about balance and trust, mm. which is exactly what you've asked now for me. Mm. So uh, let's change the order. Let's touch first uh, trust uh, and then balance. So for me, all the base of it is coming into trust. Trust as a base for the pranic process, of course, but is a, is a base for a balanced life and for the entire life. So this is a level in a way we can say it's a level to, to come into a, a person's mind and heart because all of us uh, not all of us but many of us in the spiritual realm we come from that paradigm of everything is for the best everything is working for the best but then when we get a slap in the face god why <laughs> you know so this is for me when it's measured exactly in these moments and and if we talk on trust is understanding that in those moments that maybe we do not understand why things are happening that there is this highest reason for them to happen 
And sometimes we're just very in link, like in sync with creation in alignment and what we wish is what would happen. But sometimes we maybe was not as linked or maybe totally not linked or synced. And then what creation wants would happen and we would just need to get in alignment with that. <laughs> so no, so, uh, so you know, like the base of it for me is understanding on a deep, deep level that this is where I measured in those states. So I started practicing those states many, many years ago. If in the past I was asking God why, I, was st I started catching myself asking, I said to myself, everything is accurate, everything is accurate, something bad happened to me, so called, and I asked God why. And then I laughed at myself and said like, why do I ask God why? Like I can try to find a reason, but not have a complaint over that. You know, not have a God why in a complaining kind of way, but in a curious kind of way. God, why? There's a reason. Why? Let's see. And there is something that really established inside of me, which is the understanding that God is a genius. <laughs> that creation is so wise, much more than me in a humble way. And as I am more connected to creation, I would just be as wise, but not more than, you know? <laughs> so this is where I'm aiming my energy. This is where I'm aiming my being. And this base of trust, for me, this is the base for everything. Because um, right now, when we accomplish this base, you know, all of us had this. Uh, all of us had all of us had this of maybe uh, I don't know. Let's take a, for example something that happened a year ago or a couple of years ago. Why just to have it in the perspective of time? That maybe in this moment when it's not still fresh and maybe we still don't see it. In this moment when this thing happened, it was like a, oh no kind of thing for us. It was like a, oh my god, God why kind of thing for us, you know. <laughs> but in the course of time. Maybe some of us have noticed that it served something, that it gave something to our life, that actually without this, our life wouldn't be the same. And some of it is even our biggest traumas that we still hold up until this day. So even to me, you know, as every human being, I have my traumas. But right now, I just hug my traumas and understand they came for my service and to, to make myself who I am. And I don't need to suppress them, push them, or think they were wrong in any uh, in every each uh, kind of way. I know to some people it might be difficult because you know there are uh, rapes in the world, there are thefts, there are deaths. There is like things that human beings, for us, it's uh, difficult to accept. But to creation, it's not difficult to accept. She's wiser than us, and all of those things exist, and they exist for a reason. They exist for different kind of reasons. So when we tap into this field, this is for me the base of how to handle this situation right now that we are facing, all of us. Because it's starting from this place of whatever that we might think right now, it's for our best. It's for our best as humanity. It's for our best as an individual and as collectives. And there is a beautiful uh, sentence in Hebrew that says, if I free translate, when the waves are going stronger, the strong ones are revealed. So true. And this is exactly the times of where we're at right now. Because the waves are stronger. And we are, uh, in a way, asked to deal with more things right now. Uh, even if it's less physical things, less work, but more internal things and things that are happening in the world and in our consciousness and in our being. And some of us, we are flying right now. <laughs> we are creating, we are enjoying with ourselves. I know that every day I laugh with myself, I enjoy with myself, I sleep less. Even as a pranic person, I already sleep like more or less four or five hours a, a night regularly. And in this last month, I slept sometimes two or three hours a night. I was just so energized, so pumped from life energy and from prana because of all what's happening in the field. So I, and people ask me, are you not bored? No, I don't know what is boredom. And if you're bored, give me some of your time. I would do something good with it. <laughs> or give it to Christiana. She would do something good with it as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know, from the other hand, some of us are really challenged right now. Maybe are feeling bored, uh, even though I think it's an illusion, but they're feeling bored or maybe even uh, scared. You know, how would be my day? What would I do? How would I go through this day? etc. And let's unveil for a second. Let's unveil what is really happening. What is really happening is a deep encounter with a real being. And 
around this, uh, like along this account, encounter with ourselves is as well this encounter, deep encounter with our uh, close ones, the people we live closely, maybe it's a family, maybe it's a housemates, uh, maybe we live by ourselves, with ourselves. Um, and as well with our dear ones, so our close ones, ourselves, our close ones and dear ones, uh, how much we stay in contact with family, how much we stay with contact with friends, how much we establish uh, deeper relationships, even if we don't see each other, and as well with what we do in the world, our work, our day-to-day, -day, our service. Um, so in here, I feel there is a huge opportunity to deepen in all of those, not to fall into complaining or victimizing, um, and really to tighten up and to deepen our relationships. My relation in relationships is life. Relationships is everything. Relationship is starting with my relationship with myself. And again, my relationship with my, the people around me, the close people in my, in my world, the, the relationship with what I do in the world and how I serve. And all of this is just starting with this mindset change that we've talked before from, I don't know what do I do, uh, I, I'm afraid of this time, I'm afraid the governments will take over of us, I'm afraid of a virus and, and uh, mandatory vaccines, I'm afraid of and I'm afraid of and I'm afraid of and I'm afraid of, uh, if it's projecting to the future or if, or if it's, a, even if it's, I'm afraid from today, what would I do? How would I pass my time? So all of this is like in a kind of a lack consciousness. So it starts with this mindset change of God is a genius. <laughs> and we have a gift in here right now and let's be playful with this gift. And then I understand even if it's pleasant or it's not pleasant, I have this golden opportunity right now, which is so unique, so rare and so huge to face myself and to face my relationships with myself and with all the ones that we've stated. And as well, of course, the relationship with creation. <laughs> um, and some uh, things that helped me in this, and this is like, like practical things that I really advise people uh, to do. So every day have, and this is good for, I actually share some of this with people that wanna preserve the pranic lifestyle. So some of you guys, my students, you know those, some of those, uh, some of those are, might be new for you, but it's very important to do now if you somehow are not doing them. So on a daily basis, have something I'm calling sacred me time. Which might be funny because people might say, okay, but I'm with myself all day. Okay, but are you in a sacred me time? And the sacred me time, I would advise to have first thing on the morning. Do not open your phone first thing on the morning. And some people say, okay, but I, my alarm is there. I don't care. My alarm is there as well. First, it's far from where I sleep, not to have it close to my head. Second, it's far from where I sleep. Why? So I, I won't just go back to sleep. I need to get up to turn it off. And third, when I turned it off, discipline. I don't look at anything else. Turn it off, turn it over. That's it. Start my day. Some people say, but I'm tired. Maybe I'll sleep a little bit more, etc. You can. I don't recommend. Start your day. Go and wash your face. If you want, do a shower. If you want, do a cold shower, which I advise the most because it's amazing. It's reviving so much. And if you've done a cold shower, uh, even just 20, 30 seconds in the end of your shower, doesn't it? I don't do a uh, shower, cold shower. I do a shower and then in the last 30 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, 30 seconds, one minute, maybe two minutes right now because I'm increasing, I'll just be under very like the coldest water. But you can just start from, you know, like coldish, coldish, colder, colder, colder to the coldest, you know? So do it in your term, even if you start from 10 seconds, but just do something in it because it's really giving life energy. A lot of prana is there. So if you don't want to shower in the morning, uh, do something else that wakes you up. What I do is if I shower, I go to meditate. And after meditate, I like to do something physical. Even if it's just simple push-ups or whatever you can do that you like, yoga, stretches, whatever that you do but is giving some kind of an energy cleanse. It's giving some kind of an energy connect connectiveness with a meditation and some kind of an energy evoking with some physical activity. Now, if you haven't done a shower before, which I don't do every morning a shower, sometimes I don't start my mornings like this, I might not do the meditation first. Why? Because I may be still sleepy. And if I'll do the meditation first, some days I'm totally awake and it's okay. Sometimes I would still more sleepy. So it's better I would do some kind of physical activity before 
and then I'll tap into the meditation. Christiana, anything's happening? You're okay? Christiana? Yes. You're okay? Yes. What happened? Ah, cool, cool. No, I saw you. I saw you looking on something. So. Oh yeah, there was some. Uh, there was some announcement on the street, and I never ah. have announcement. I'm on top of the mountain. Wow. So like, I, I mean, really in a secluded place, like yeah. quite secluded. And there's this car announcing something, mm -hmm. and I was like very surprised. Okay. Go ahead. Forgive me for. No, no worries. No worries. Okay. So starting with sacred me time, and if you don't have it in the morning, at least have it later in your day. Um, and it might be even just inspirational time. You might read something, write something, but have time with yourself, which is sacred in whatever way that is sacred for you. I just give some examples, but do it in your terms. Uh, and after this is seeing that in my day, I have different things because right now, especially when we don't work and I'm working already from home. So I know more how to divide my time. There is always how to do better and better. We're always on this, uh, on this route, We're getting better in life and how to manage our times even better. But uh, for me, I would want to see that uh, daily or maybe every once a couple of days, I have certain aspects in my, in my life that are taking place. As for example, study time, uh, work time and inspirational time. Like if it's working on like how to build my work or with the work with themselves, with the work with themselves, which is, which is with people. Um, friends time. You know, calling up a friend, checking up with friends that I haven't talked now for some for a long time, maybe, uh, but like outside time, you know, family and friends, making sure that I'm keeping the connection. Just next uh, next week, my sister and I have a Zoom meeting, have a Zoom date, you know, so we keep the contact. So make Zoom dates with your families if if they don't live close to you, you know. So make sure you're keeping in contact. Uh, meditation time, of course, meditation is the foundation. So really great, really recommended. Um, uh, some kind of physical activity, time. Whatever that is right for you, it might be five, 10 minutes, you're doing something small, even just soft yoga or stretching your body or going for a short run. Uh, in Israel, we can only do 100 meters from our home. So my sister and her boyfriend are running like uh, around their building. <laughs> so, you know, so we, we cannot have excuses, you know, so just make some kind of physical activity and some kind of inspirational time. And I'm differentiating this from study because maybe I'm studying something that I want to know, but inspirational time is something that inspires me. Now, it might be that my studies inspire me as well. At least for me, it's like this, but I'm still differentiating them from inspirational time, not something necessarily I study, but just inspired from people that we're inspired, people that we love, things that we believe in, uh, these kind of things. Another thing uh, might be, and again, it doesn't need to be daily. It's to see that you have it in your week because it's, quite a lot. Organizing time. We might have right now a lot of different papers, um, emails, uh, like this place in uh, the closet that we don't look or a drawer that we don't want to open or boxes that are still not open. Like take this time to have some kind of organization cleaning in your life. Uh, and another one of it is a uh, quiet time. Quiet time, uh, uh, cleaning time, cleaning the head time which I'm differentiating this from meditation, I actually call it sacred nothing time. <laughs> yes. And the sacred nothing time means you actually do not do a thing because we are doers. We are so doing. And even when we do meditation, we do meditation. <laughs> so it's funny. So sacred nothing time is really just sitting there or lying there doing nothing. Sometimes in my day, I feel I want sacred nothing time. I just take 10, 20 minutes and I lay my body. I lay my body. I don't sleep necessarily. I just lay my body. Now, stats might be there. It's, it's okay, but don't uh, have sacred nothing time laid on the bed and like with your phone. That's not sacred nothing time, you know? Sacred nothing time would really just be with yourself and with what's been going on with you. And just in a way, resting your day is like resetting something. And sometimes five minutes like this might change the entire course of your day. If you took five minutes of sacred nothing time, you might do it outside, sitting in nature. But again, it's not meditating in nature. It's just sitting, just sitting and contemplating life. Now, if you want to do it on a daily base or a couple of times a week, super recommended. Sacred me time, I would recommend every day. Sacred nothing time, besides maybe every day, 
maybe some of the days. Um, cool, so this is, uh, I have some more, but I don't know where we are in timings because I think we might finish soon. We're and one hour past the due time. <laughs> <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> now about 10 minutes, I would have to go. <laughs> okay, cool. That's why. So I wanna give some, because I promised to people that I invited, I wanna briefly do um, the uh, preparation for a pranic process and a reset. Mm -hmm. And I really give it, sorry guys, I really give it just in uh, like bigger uh, perspectives. I cannot go deeper into them. And maybe we have time for, I don't know, two, three questions and we'll call it today. Mm -hmm. um, so a preparation for a process. One of the most important parts of your process. For me, I recommend don't go to a process if you didn't prepare yourself to a process. And preparation for a process, you might do yourself, better do in a professional guidance because it would allow you to open things that you might not know how to open yourself. But anyway, I want to give you some pinpoints and some of them starting with the why. Why to do a pranic process? Why do I want to have this journey? And this is the place that I thought maybe they would uh, send us answers, but we have them already. <laughs> so we're past that, that's awesome. And what would you want from the journey? You know, uh, in a moment, we will talk about reset for people that have already done the, the journey. Um, but prepare yourself, understand your whys, and understand what you're scared of. Why not? What might happen, you know? So we want to look in both of them. When I'm doing private sessions with people preparing, I'm asking those two questions. Uh, this is in the first meeting that we have. Another thing is to look on the different uh, fields of our life and to really prepare them. Actually, we're talking about relationships because again, relationships are everything. So as we said, relationships with family, with uh, my partner, if I have one, with children, with my children, if I have one, relationships with my home. Do I love my home? Do I love my neighborhood? My work, am I enjoying in my work? Am I enjoying what I'm doing in my day to day? Relationships with my friends. Maybe I have friends that take in energy for me relationships uh, uh, with my activities. Maybe I'm a part of some kind of a, I don't know, meditation group for four years now, but it's not aligning with me anymore. So uh, all of this we're doing like cleansing before we're starting the journey of the person because we want to cleanse different things that I, I know from my perspective, later on when he's deeper in the journey would suck energy from him, would deplete energy from them. So I want to make sure we're preparing all those different fields. And then come the most important fields, your relationships with yourself and your relationship with creation. So we wanna look in all of those different relationships and make sure it, they don't need to be perfect, they just need to be leveled up. So we are in a better place. And from there, we can start a journey. We don't need to wait for all of them to finish. They would never finish, you know? <laughs> but we just wanna see that they are in a good place, good enough to start. Um, and as well a preparation uh, to the challenges that we're passing. Cause you know, like nine years, I started to go my journey, more than eight years I'm guiding people. The challenges are mapped. My students, they know this, this is always what they say. They say that cause I do it by the weeks. Uh, so uh, let's say for example, in the integration, they said, you've asked me questions or you've told me things that are about to happen that I didn't know. And then I just met them. <laughs> they said, this was so helpful. <laughs> and you know, this is, this is the privilege we have in here that you know, maybe you and I didn't have when we did our journey. So when we have someone to help us through a journey and to really understand and map already, and I'm humble. I, I, I don't wanna say I've mapped it all. I'm always ready for more surprises to come. But you can imagine the cases are repetitive, you know? So I've seen already enough cases of this color, enough cases of this color, enough cases of this, of this, of this, of this. And now I can really map those different cases and serve them to the people and as well see who is more tending to what and help specifically and very pointed into this, like laser focused into that. And this would makes people already beforehand to uh, spot some potential challenges for them and prepare in those potential challenges before we start a journey. So it helps us in the initiation itself and for sure in the integration after. Uh, some as a bonus might do kind of fasting, intermittent fasting, or maybe one, two, two and a half dry days before we start initiating. Uh, when I initiate, I initiate through four dry days. Uh, but there is again, different, different uh, uh, ways of how to get there and I respect them all. 
Uh, I just really, really appreciate the four dry days. It does a lot, a lot, a lot as a reset to a person. Um, but I ask them not to do this before, not to prepare it for dry days. Maximum that people have prepared it was with two and a half dry days. The majority just with one. <laughs> um, and another thing is communication. Communicating and understanding uh, in the with the people in our life, who is good for us to communicate with about what, what we're about to do and who maybe more important is not good for us to communicate because they're going to really pull us down. And sometimes we're excited. So we want to share, 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 share. Not necessarily the right timing, guys. So we really want to look into the different relationships, their nature, and to understand who is good to communicate with and who is maybe not good yet to communicate. First, do your journey, stabilize. And when you're at a, a more older tree, when you are rooted deep, when you are strong and more wide open, then you can take strong wins. As people come and say to you, blah, 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 blah. You're about to die. You're crazy. Your body is eating itself from inside. This is against nature. This is against uh, science. This is against blah, blah, blah. Okay, they're educated like this. I don't even blame them. But it's us that knows that something is possible for us, differentiated by how we've been educated to go and do this route and journey, not waiting for their approval. And as well, not letting them taking us down just because they love us, but they are cutting their perceptions. Um, I'll, uh, this is uh, for a preparation. There is some more, but I stop here because I want to give last points about resetting. Resetting is all the above. <laughs> if you want to do a reset, is of course all the above. Uh, and as well, just make sure that you have a good process. Like if you do a reset, so do a good setting. Sometimes people that I guide, they do four days at least in order to reset themselves. So if you do four days like this, make sure it's a good surrounding, not in a place that you still need to work, you still need to all day do laundry, cook for other people, uh, help other people, help your parents, help everybody. No, have it as a retreat for yourself if you're doing this kind of four days of reset. Uh, so you can build from them and on healthy foundations for your pranic journey life term. And this is guys, you know, like doctors, they study seven years and then have in, uh, 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 like they're young doctors or they still need to do stage and stuff like that. So that's a, like eight, nine, 10 years to be a doctor. If you ask to be a pranic person, it wouldn't happen in the course of a couple of days. <laughs> you know, so have it in a long-term journey, but once you've invested in the infrastructure, which is just the first couple of months, couple is uh, not two, I mean, like just, the couple of months, I don't know, it's a phrase. A few, <laughs> months, a few months. A few months, exactly. So make it as a journey of a few months. And once you invested in this one, you just gave yourself maybe one of the biggest gifts you can give to yourself in your life. This was at least for me. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for sharing. Uh, it was Thank great you, to... Anna. So let's see maybe if we have like two, three questions just to give some... Uh, so yes. I briefly feeling of where the people are. And, you know, and people have just, because we shared so much richness of information, people yeah. have just uh, been happy to hear it. They are just commenting. That's great advice. Thank you. Thanks for the loving reminder about the processes. Five people have said they have done one and one said he, she hasn't done one, but would love to know more. And then, um, that's about it. One person asks, what happens if I change negative feelings with some positive feelings in the middle of the chat? In the middle of that? The chat. I think conversation. Yes, your notes. What do you mean? Sorry, I didn't I understand the question. In the middle of the chat, changing? It changes the feelings, the negative feelings uh, into positive ones in the middle of the conversation. What happens? He asks. What conversations do you, do you understand? Uh, no. Chart. Okay. What's the chart? I, I don't understand the question. Ah, I think maybe the chart is said like, uh, like this. If, if, uh, while we, uh, feel like we go down, feel bad feelings, for example. Ah, okay. If we change it to positive feelings, great. Enjoy them. <laughs> you know, we don't have to, this is as well. Another, uh, important thing. We don't have to like keep ourselves down, but we don't want to escape from being down. So if just let it be like we talked in the beginning, a flexitarian, you know, and let it be as a natural thing, as a natural flow. If you feel that you're about to go down, just don't escape from there. If you may, 
allow yourself to feel this, give it the time, give it the space, go there, explore. But if from this exploration, yeah, this happens, would come a moment that suddenly you feel like, wow, your heart is so full and you are right now actually feeling better. Amazing, this is eventually where we go. Sometimes it just wouldn't happen after one time. You will need to do it for several of times, but sometimes it might happen from a first time already because it was such a big revelation for us. So that's great. So that's about it, about what we have in the comments. Yes, you got the question right, he confirms. <laughs> so uh, to, to wrap it up, we would say like this, Tal has his data in the chat box. So you can go on his email or WhatsApp and contact him for more details on what we've just talked. And soon he will have a website. So you will also have to, you will also be able to access that thing. And uh, you'll have probably more information there. Uh, he will share it with us soon. Uh, as for my end, there's two announcements <laughs> that, uh, about uh, some good news coming up. So this festival is ongoing as long as we have very beautiful pranic people around us or people that have been on a pranic journey or are understanding a pranic journey will be participating. So fabulous people are coming in. Uh, you can see if you receive the landing page, on the landing page, there are the list of the upcoming talks. So on that list, you'll have, you'll have the next scheduled talks. Tomorrow we meet with uh, uh, Ray Maor, who is Tal's friend. All the people from Israel on Easter time are joining us and that's not <laughs> a coincidence. Yes, and uh, <laughs> because everything is just weaven in perfection. And uh, then on Sunday, we have Dr. Sudhir Sa at 7 p.m., who has uh, monitored for 14 days a person who is nourished by prana for 75 years with no food and no liquids. So this doctor is going to share with us how he's done it, what happened in a hospital, what, what were the general aspects, but also some solutions in the times of change from a perspective of a doctor. And oh, sorry, I've just place the list in our chat box. Great <laughs> as well. <laughs> I'm gonna place it. Uh, maybe you need it. <laughs> I'm gonna place it on YouTube and uh, our page. And um, ah, but I think it needs uh, more because the end of it I see is in the 18th. No, at least what you've uh, posted uh -huh. here. Okay, uh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so make sure you're you're uh, like uh, uh, schedule giving them as well the other dates because the 18th. Yes, 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 yes. So. Uh, you know, you can go, everybody, you can go on the, on our page, which is uh, the event page, and there is the whole list, because the chat box does not allow me to put more, it seems. It has mm -hmm. a limited number of words. I get uh, you. So maybe, <laughs> Christiana, you can just do from uh, today and on, or even, you don't need today anymore, Ray and on. So just this uh -huh, part. From Ray on. Good yeah. idea. Well, it's good to have men around. They're more <laughs> logical. <laughs> Thank God. Um so there you go, Saturday on, that's the list we have so far. There's also other people waiting for you know, them to confirm, like Nassim Haramin and um, Kai Hugard the, and uh, others also that are going to join us, but still not confirmed the day and time. Um, and on Sunday, so Saturday, I told you, Sunday it's Dr. Sa, and after Dr. Sa, we're starting the pranic process online, another eight days of detox, first of all, and reframing our understanding of pranic nourishment. We are going to have our energy level enhanced by daily meditation, by wise talking on, you know, spiritual, but also um, very down to earth concepts. We're gonna share methods to uh, practice at home or to integrate this in your day-to-day -day life uh, with a high frequency without um, you know dropping back into binging or not knowing your body and the end result of it might not be that you stop eating which is not my aim and but it will surely be that you're a much more conscious person that is able to channel prana in a deeper and more valuable way for yourself and others. That's what the pranic process does 
uh, for eight days with uh, daily meditation at 8 p.m. Bucharest time. And there's also one-on-one -on -one pranic process that we can share for seven meetings where we dive deeper into the emotional uh, challenges that we have, the mental challenges that you have, and also the, the physical body challenges that you've experienced either through another process or in your day-to-day -day life while trying to detox. And that's gonna also help you decrease your food intake and increase your pranic intake, which is my view of pranic journey. It's natural, it's organic and it's smooth <clears throat> And it's with joy and ease and grace. And it leads you not to necessarily not eating, but not being unconscious anymore, <laughs> which is very beautiful. So that's what you can start. There's also in the chat box, you can have access to the link and also contact me directly if you want to be with us for, for these days. Uh -huh. uh, and, and the next Prani festivals are one in August 8, uh, 15 to 19, where we can meet us live, including Tall, hopefully. <laughs> and the next one in India in March 3rd to 8, 2021. Wow. Yeah, we're continuing with the live meetings as well. This crisis is not going to stop what's happening in the pranic world, what's happening in the crisis grids, what's happening in the planetary uh, grid uplifting. We are going and we are thriving. That's what's going on. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So thank you all for watching. I, would, I, would, uh, I want some things, Christiana. So first I want really, really to thank you and to say I love you a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I really want all of you guys that are here, I really want to recommend you if you feel connected with this amazing being, so go and work with her because she's magic. Uh, and you, you bring magic in my life. And when we message, and you know, when we laugh and we play, I just, my heart is opening. So I, I feel you are such a pranic being. You're full with so much prana, you know? So you have a lot what to share with others. Um, and yeah, I'm like, I'm, it's amazing to hear about your group process. That sounds amazing. It, may, it makes me want to join you. <laughs> Absolutely, anytime. <laughs> I'm happy to have you as a, as a participant, as a friend also, yeah. <laughs> well wow, that's spontaneous maybe i'll even start with you sunday but <laughs> that's that's super awesome i'm really happy that you're doing this because it's so important to people get from this energy that i am i'm thirsty to have more in life you know in in the pranic world in the pranic life that is not just processes it's like a bigger perspective of it and i really feel you bring this message and you bring it with so much like sweet and life full energy so be blessed for this thank you for doing this um as well yeah please come to the pranic festival in romania because i want to be there uh if it would uh, attend i know i just heard that nicolas have uh, moved the italian one to the world pranic festival to online right now i uh, didn't know that yeah it's, it's really like it's today's news or yesterday's news something like this both of us were supposed to meet in italy in the world pranic festival that is happening first to 10th of june it would yeah. be online so maybe you know we'll just think online up yes. until we can really hug in you in reality <laughs> yes yes you see there's much layers of reality to be unfolded until june and also until august and august for me it feels like open yeah and totally. i'm not doubting too. it at the moment mm -hmm. and um you know because already romania is opening in terms of restaurants have been opening and doing catering already cafes yes. are being have been opening and doing like uh, at the window service. There's more people on the streets. There's more people in the parking space, cars in the parking spaces, people at supermarkets or, or malls. We've started to move here and um, we're gonna keep moving. And there's more and more ways of light coming in to resolve this situation starting April 4th because on April 4th and April 5th, we've been 15 hours on, in meditation with millions of people all over the planet. Yeah. I've joined four global meditations for people. <laughs> and there's others who have been more on this. For 15 mm -hmm. hours, I've been in constant meditations with various groups all over the world. Millions of people have prayed for peace and have prayed for health. And me being connected with also light beings and ships. I don't want to go to woo on you, but that's my work and that's what I'm doing. 
uh, the news are good and the news are great and we're going to evolve out of this um, and into a higher, much more joyous state on this planet. So be assured and be faithful and look at the outcome that you want to see, not at the news. <laughs> That's my and I really hope, I really, I believe and I hope that in August we would meet in Romania and that yeah. everything would be already cleared and clean and behind us. Yeah. Um, totally. Now, uh, I'll, I'll say some things about what I do, uh, just out of my perspective. So for people that want to stay in contact to, to work together, what I'm doing with people is preparation for a pranic journey. If you want to do a pranic journey, we first do a preparation to a pranic journey. <laughs> so this is important for me. This is the way that I share my work in the world. And uh, we don't just start. Uh, if you want to do a pranic reset, meaning you've already done a pranic journey in your life, so the preparation might be very quick. Uh, we might do like, I don't know, a week or two or three, depends you, and we just dive in. Uh, and anyway, what we're doing is holistically just bringing this into your life. If it's through a full process to a person that is a first timer or to a reset. So uh, maybe you can put, if it's okay, Christiana, because I think maybe the chat is uh, going down and down. So maybe uh, before we finish, mm -hmm. you can put them there. If I make it easier for you, I can put it here. So you can mm -hmm. just copy paste mm -hmm. and you can put in the WhatsApp and the email. Mm -hmm. So the WhatsApp and the email will be shared. Uh, mm -hmm. I would ask you, uh, contact me in WhatsApp is better. Uh, I'll just be faster than the emails. Uh, Christiana was optimistic about me being a doing a website in uh, English. <laughs> I'm starting now the one in Hebrew uh, after oh. nine years. So it would take some time for the English one, but I believe it would come one day. Um, but I take it in my time. Uh, up until today, it was only people approaching me all this time, all these years. Mm -hmm. uh, it stays like this, but I'm just putting some more uh, ways of information and approach outside as well. So if you feel you want either a preparation for a process and a process or a reset into your pranic lifestyle, feel very welcome to, to connect and to contact. And the way that I would recommend you to go, just see where your hearts connect. So some of us more connected with me, some of us more connected with Christiana, some of us more connected with this guy, with that guy. Go with your heart. And this is the beauty. There is, you know, abundance of people, abundance of guides. Follow your heart, follow your heart path, because this is where your best guidance is. Um, so this is this is my really warm recommendation. And I feel we're pretty much uh, it. Yeah. Uh, maybe before finishing, I want to leave us uh, two questions for inspiration for this time. And these two questions would be, let's imagine that we are in the end of this period, in the end of this, uh, <laughs> it, it, however time it takes right now, it might be like a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks, I hope not more, but it's soon yes. to come. It's soon to come. So imagine that you are in the end of this period and you're asking yourself two questions. In this time, what have I done for myself? And in this time, what have I done for the world? And my prayer is that in the end of this period, you could look into the eyes of these two questions and have a huge smile on your face. But it's starting from working on this right now. So really try to see what you can do for yourself and for your life, what you can share as a service to the community and to the world. Thank you for the reminder. That's so necessary. Uh, and uh, I, I must admit that uh, for me, that's very useful because as much as I take sacred time and, um, you know, how you call it, do nothing time, I call it. Sacred nothing time and sacred me time. <laughs> sacred, uh, yeah, sacred nothing. I do that, but in these times, already for three months or more, I've been in constant service for the world. It might be time for me to ask myself, you know, if I can do more, or if the universe wants to do more for myself, actually, let them work. <laughs> but, also. It's, but it wants it wants your active part. Absolutely. It wants your active part. Religious people in Hebrew. They say, uh, you, you say them, you say to them some things, not some of them, yeah, not as a generalization, but some of the religious people in, uh, in uh, Israel uh, and around the world, you might say to them, uh, yeah, maybe we meet uh, in this day, in this time over there. And they say, yeah, 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 uh, with the help of God, with the help of God, which is true. So, so true, but not forgetting the other half. 
put an alarm on. <laughs> My help as well. <laughs> <laughs> like if you want to meet, put an alarm on. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, we can, we can uh, hope for God to put his alarm, but you know, he would help us go there, but we would do our part for that. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, thank you so, so much, Christiana, and all the viewers. Thank you for being patient with us. You know, we're just, we're sharing our heart. We had some technical issues as well. It took longer than what both of us thought, but I feel it was amazing. I hope you got a lot of it and that you will use some of this material. Don't just let it be something that went through one year, goes through other year. Contemplate about it. See how it can affect your life. See how it can give and gift and serve your life. Okay. I love Thanks. serving with you, Christiana. Thank you, and I so, love you much. so much. So, so much. <laughs> I love you too. And see you on Sunday if you want to come. Or um, also uh, for everyone tomorrow at 7 p.m., uh, keep your eye uh, on the emails or just join the same, keep the link and join the same landing page for Ray Mauer's uh, talk at 7 p.m. tomorrow. See you cool. soon. Thank Big you for love. everything. Thank Keep you. on spreading your light, Christiana, and all of you. Much love. Take care of yourself, guys. Happy Easter. Happy, Happy holidays. Much love. Mm.